Hey there YouTube, Far Off Racing here. We do a fair amount of fabrication in the shop and this is the machine we use to do most of our machining. This is an original Smithy combination lathe mill drill circa 1986 or so. This is a machine that dates back to the time when China was first opening its borders and people were first breaking into using Chinese factories to make machine tools. Where companies like Harbor Freight and Grizzly and the various other sorts of people importing Chinese started to get a look at what the Chinese were capable of doing. It's a very interesting machine in the Chinese sense because it turns out that although it is a lathe and a mill and a drill, it isn't a very good one of any of those. It's a slightly better lathe than it is mill, and it, its primary advantage, aside from the fact that it does save quite a bit of space, is that I have something to work with at all. It has a lot of disadvantages. It has a lot of strange quirks, and I'm not gonna go into all of them right now, but it has something in common with a lot of other slightly more modern versions of Chinese mills and lathes, and that is it doesn't have a whole lot of power. It runs on 110 single phase. That limits the power of the motor quite a bit. And that means you aren't going to do what industry does and run massive feeds and speeds using carbide tooling to chew through material as fast as you can. This does the job if you're aware of its quirks and how to get around it to make it do what you want. But there are techniques that you can use to help you out if you've got a machine of a similar class. And I'm going to show you them uh, in a second. So here's our first example. This is your typical sort of brazed carbide boring bar. Right here, that's the piece of carbide that's been brazed onto the boring bar. You can actually see the brass where it's been brazed on right there. And this is a slightly better one than usual. The carbide's actually not too bad. It's got a, a nice sharp edge on it. So if you've got any experience using these things, you have an idea of what kind of surface finish it gives you. You have an idea of how much power it takes to drive it. And it suffers from the problems that carbide is in aluminum. Carbide, it's not as sharp as aluminum needs. And the aluminum being gummy tends to want to stick on the end of the carbide boring bar. It gets stuck right along this edge and builds up. So the alternative is to use a piece of index tooling like this. This is a, an index boring bar. It's in its holder right here. You can see that. It's in its holder, but on the end, we've got an insert. And this insert, you can see it's different than the usual sort of carbide inserts in that it's silver and brightly polished, and it's got this sort of scoop profile on this edge in here. And this edge and this edge, these are razor sharp. Uh, it's designed to cut into aluminum and then throw the chip off. And this here will cut aluminum with way less power than a carbide insert. And the polished surface on here helps prevent the aluminum from building up on it. It doesn't completely prevent it from build up. It helps to have some flood coolant on it or some mist coolant. But it's way slipperier to the aluminum than the uh, standard sort of boring bar is. This cuts with less power. This cuts with a better surface finish than the carbide does on aluminum, which is great for people with piece of shit little machines like mine. You've probably also seen these brazed carbide lathe tools. This one here is a 60 degree tool for threading. Uh, this is a nasty ass cheap one that I got. You see they've painted the whole thing, this gold, right down to the carbide. Uh, it's got a piece of carbide brazed on the end. These have their place. I had a job where high speed steel wouldn't touch it at all. And the only thing I could get to go through it was carbide. And in fact, it wore the carbide down, the piece was so tough. So there is a time and a place where these things can be useful. But uh, this is not something you want to be using on a piece of aluminum. You can, however, use something like this. This is index tooling, but that's a high-speed steel insert on here. That's not carbide, and it's not the special one like I showed you over there. Uh, this is actually a high-speed steel triangular profile insert with, with the rake already built into it. They're kind of hard to find because industry doesn't use them. Industry uses carbide. But they do exist, and this gets you all the benefits of using index tooling while still using high-speed steel. You don't have to grind it. You can change it around. It doesn't take as much time to, to get a profile you need if you can already purchase it. This saves you from having to grind your own high-speed steel tools, which is uh, really very, very handy, especially if you're not super confident at grinding high-speed steel like me. Here's another example. So this is a face mill that I featured in another video, uh, one of the first ones I ever made as a matter of fact. So this one's got this 
highly polished surface with a lot of that, that scoop profile and the really, really sharp edges along in here. So this thing cuts through aluminum like butter and it leaves an absolutely beautiful surface finish. Now the surface finish this thing looks like these just beautiful mirrored finish. So I'm going to do something a little unconventional in that I'm going to run the boring bar as a turning tool. So I've got the boring holder here. This is the boring bar here. We're going to run the workpiece backwards, and we're just going to run the boring bar along the outside edge of this to turn it down. And you get a chance to see how it cuts the chips. Uh, when you do it as a boring bar, it doesn't film really well because all you see is just the bird's nest show up. So we'll, we'll give this a shot. So we've got it set up for a 30 thou depth of cut, so it'll take 60 thou off. Let's give this a shot and see how it turns out. off the coolant and we'll zoom in and you can see we've got a nice mirror finish with just a little bit of tool marks on it and you can also probably see here on the actual tool so this is close up here on the end of the tool. You can see there's no aluminum buildup on the insert. It just did the job exactly the way we expected it to. That is quite the surface finish. So there you go. That shows just how well aluminum specific insert tooling works on a hobbyist class machine. Thanks for watching. Stop it, please. Stop it, please.